Newton's Law of Gravitation Since ancient times, scientists have always been curious about planets, stars, and their motions. Nicholas Copernicus was the first to say that the sun is stationary and the earth revolves around the sun. Later, the German scientist Johannes Kepler discovered three elegant laws of planetary motion, which are popularly known as Kepler's laws of motion. By analyzing these laws, Sir Isaac Newton determined the nature of the force of attraction between the sun and the planets. This force of attraction is called gravitation, which not only acts between the sun and the planets, but also between any two objects in the universe. Newton observed that all the objects in the universe attract each other with a certain amount of force, but in most cases, the force is too weak to observe due to the very large distance of separation. The range of this force is infinite, but the force becomes weaker as the objects move away. To measure this gravitational force, Newton introduced a law known as Newton's Law of Gravitation. The law states that any two objects in this universe attract each other along their connecting straight lines. The magnitude of this gravitational attraction is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Mathematical Expression Let the distance between two objects of mass m1 and m2 be r. If the force of attraction between the two objects is denoted by f, then according to Newton's law of gravitation, f is directly proportional to m1 into m2 and f is inversely proportional to r square. By combining these two formulas we get, f is proportional to m1 into m2 divided by r square. Now we need a constant to replace the proportionality symbol and place an equal sign there. This constant is taken here as g, so the formula is written as f is equal to g m1 m2 divided by r square. This is the formula for the gravitational attraction between two objects in this universe. Here G is known as the universal gravitational constant. Now, if capital M is taken as the mass of the Earth, and small m is the mass of any object present on the surface of the Earth, then the gravitational attraction between them, F is equal to G M M by R square. Where R is the radius of the Earth? Since the object is on the surface of the Earth, the separation is taken as the radius of the Earth. Gravitational constant If we want to define the gravitational constant g, then all the quantities present in the formula, except the constant g and f, must be taken as unit values. So, if we take unit mass and unit distance, then we get g equals f. This simply defines the gravitational constant as follows. The gravitational constant is the force of attraction between two objects of unit masses separated by unit distance. Unit and dimension of G From equation number 3, we can write the unit of G is equal to the unit of F into unit of R square divided by unit of M square. We know, in the SI unit system, the unit of mass is kilogram, the unit of distance is meter, and the unit of force is newton. So the SI unit of G is Newton meter square per kilogram square. Similarly, we can write the CGS unit of G as dyne centimeter square per gram square. Again using equation number 3, we can write the dimension of G is equal to dimension of F into dimension of R square divided by dimension of M square. That is, MLT minus 2 into L square divided by M square. Or M inverse, L cube, T minus 2. If we talk about the magnitude of G, then it is determined by various experiments. In the SI unit system, we find G is equal to 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram square. And in the CGS unit system, we find G is equal to 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 dyne centimeter square per gram square. That means, if we separate two objects of mass 1 kilogram by a distance of 1 meter, the gravitational force between them will be 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton. According to Newton's law of gravitation, the force of attraction between two objects depends only on their masses and their distance. This force of attraction does not depend on the state of the objects 
chemical composition, temperature, the medium between them, etc. The law of gravitation applies equally to the small distances between earthly bodies and very large distances such as the distances between planets and stars. With the help of this law, it is possible to clearly explain the motion of the planets around the Sun. For these reasons, the law of gravitation is considered to be universal, and the gravitational constant is called the universal gravitational constant. However, according to Einstein's theory of relativity, the mass of an object depends on its velocity. The distance between two objects also depends on the velocity of the observer, that is, the distance between two objects measured by a stationary observer will not be the same as that measured by a moving observer. And also Newton's law of gravitation does not apply to microscopic distances, such as atomic and nuclear distances. For these reasons, Newton's law of gravitation can no longer be called a universal law. However, even in Einstein's theory, the universality of the gravitational constant g is not undermined. In this video, we just learn about the law of gravitation. In the coming video, we will discuss the gravitational field and gravitational potential. So stay with us. If you enjoy our videos, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.